What we want to address here today is performance when working with civil cells or uh, placing of multiple or many civil cells in a project. Some users may experience their project slowing down so that when uh, multiple cells have been placed and clipped out of the corridors, uh, any modification to these cells will take a substantial amount of time. The reason for this is because when we clip out a corridor, the clip process relies on a microstation command to clip out the corridor. When it does this, the corridor is unaware of the fact that it is only a small area being affected and uh, in essence rebuilds itself or regenerates itself along with all the other clips on this process. So we can do a couple things to make this perform much better. So if you've been following along in the SC301 example um, exchange series on YouTube, you may have seen the setup where we have our alignments referenced in to a file and we create the corridor in the file. We then go and we place multiple civil cells along that alignment. So we'll come in and we'll just place one cell as an example. So we're going to grab our ramp alignment and the through road edge of pavement and we'll accept and we'll place this cell. Now what happens when a user works with a cell, either they developed or if you're working with the cell, maybe you've modified or directly out of the example cell library. What we'll notice is that these cells contain multiple entities. So um, even though some of the cells within the example library will allow you to then clip out the corridor, during the placement process, what is actually happening is each component in the cell is making a clip on a corridor. So if we look at just this one cell that I've created here, we have a linear template that has to clip the corridor. We also have another linear template, smaller, along this curb return. We have multiple linear templates along the transition of the highway. We have a curb linear template along the curve lane. And then we have terrains that need to also clip. So just in this intersection cell alone, we're looking at seven or eight clip processes. So what we do to speed things up a bit is within the creation of the civil cell, I've built a finished surface. So if we open up a view and look at the three-dimensional aspect of this design, what we'll see is, is in fact, we have a terrain model called FG intersection. An FG intersection is built within the cell, and so when the cell places, this FG intersection terrain also places. So this allows me to, let's say I want to select this and come in here and turn off my triangles and turn on my contours. This allows me to see the grading of this entire cell. In fact, if I uh, expand this out and turn the triangles off on the island, I'll even see the contouring uh, across this center median. We'll look close, we'll see the contouring across the roadway and the shoulder and all. So it serves a couple purposes. One, it helps me with volumes. And two, it's going to help me to clip out my corridor. So now when I come in or when the user comes in and um, uses the corridor clipping, 
which is the actual function that's being used. We select our corridor and then we come into our 3D view and we locate that first and only clipping reference. We reset and that clips out our corridor design. Okay. So that one clip now takes the place of eight clips. So in essence, we would have the same performance by placing eight more of these cells as we would have had we not had a finished terrain. Now how do we create this finished grade on a cell? We'll look at that in just a moment. So we'll look at a basic cell library. And the way the cell libraries are configured that we delivered um, they're created out what I call out in space where our reference lines have elevations established and the cell is placed. Now to create a terrain based off the cell we, we could easily do this however the problem is because our end conditions to the cell are not showing we cannot add those end condition tie-in points or breakpoints into our terrain. So how do we get this in our terrain or get it, these to be exposed? The way we expose these is we build a construction terrain into our model. So I've placed a couple lines out here that are sloped so that they interject some complexity into the surface. And then I simply uh, within that cell I just update or uh, reprocess the linear templates. Once reprocessed the linear templates the break lines are displayed. Now to create the surface on the cell the easiest way is to move into the default 3D view. Within this view, we can create the surface from our break lines. To simplify things a bit more, we can open our Project Explorer, go in or drill into our features, toggle off our components and reveal only our break lines. From here we can come into our terrain model, create a surface, call the surface in this case finish grade, choose a feature definition, and then begin selecting all our break lines. The reality is if all we want to use this terrain for is to clip, we could um, simply select the outer break lines only. We'll just reset and add these. We'll add these all as break lines. And then we'll go back and we'll add in the center line. Reset. And then we'll change our features. that represent our boundaries. So in this case I have my seam, my tie-in points, and I'll reset. And these are my boundaries. 
Now I can simply show the triangles. But the point is we have a boundary terrain. We can symbolize it or featureize it however we want. And we now can regenerate our cell. So we would next go into our civil cells, create, and we would give our cell a name and complete creating the civil cell. We'll next look at a couple other methods or workflows that will help us again to increase performance even more.